I'm doing some prepping for the week and I wanted something that was easy to put together, easy to heat up, easy to store. And that is a casserole. This casserole in particular is one of my favorites. It's something that my grandmother would make and that's where I got it. And now I make it a lot because it's just so good. It's my funeral casserole. Yes, that is a very strange name for it, but I don't know what the real name is. I think she got it from a magazine somewhere many moons ago. Or maybe a church potluck is a better use for it, but you know, when people die, it sounds kind of morbid, but when people die or maybe they're going through a hard time, you bring people food and it's comforting. Usually something that they can just kind of pop in the oven, don't have to worry about. Bringing food to people is a way to show that you care. And this casserole, it gives a lot of hugs. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna make and that's what I'm gonna eat. So let's get started. First, some prep. This casserole is a good mix of all of my kind of favorite things to find in a casserole. You want it to have some texture, but still kind of be very cohesive. You know, a good casserole includes something kind of crunchy, gotta have veggies, probably some meat not needed all the time. I do make this sometimes meatless, but I do have chicken today, so that's what I'm gonna do. And then you gotta have that crunchy top. I'm just going to prep up my veggies, dice the onion up. Doesn't have to be perfect, just a good dice. And of course, you'll have to have a creamy element. We'll get to that later. And I think that all casseroles should have a starch. That's just what I think. So we're gonna hit it all. Also, there's going to be maybe some surprise elements that usually when I tell people the ingredients of this casserole, they're kind of looking at me like I have seven heads, but I swear it'll all come together and it's very delicious. Now, or the celery. Look how big the celery is. So I'm only gonna use this one. Stove here, I am just sauteing up the onion and the celery in some olive oil and a little bit of butter, salt and pepper. Make sure you are seasoning every single layer that's going in here. We don't want a bland casserole, but I'm just going to cook these for five or ten minutes. You don't want them to be completely done. You just want them a little softened because they will continue to cook in the oven with the casserole. While we are waiting for our secret ingredient to finish cooking, I can start kind of putting together the innards of the casserole. Get a bowl. I have just some chicken that I had from the other day. Just going to toss this in here. Our saute veggies from earlier. I have got some mayo and some cream of mushroom soup. The liquids in here may need to be adjusted, so this is what I'm going to start with. And then once we get everything all mixed together, I can then assess if I need more liquid or not. Season this up, some salt and pepper. Now for our secret ingredient, hard boiled eggs. I just have four here. I like a lot of it because I like the way it kind of flavors the casserole. I think it gives a nice texture and some flavor and the yolk adds a lot of creaminess to it. So I just hard boiled a few eggs and I'm just going to peel them and then chop them and then add them. I know it sounds strange, but I promise they give a really good flavor and a little something extra, especially when you kind of bite into one of the whites because it's a little firmer than the rest of the creamier texture of the casserole. Just do it, I promise it'll be okay. <laughs> and you know, get that extra protein. And I did do a video a while ago on how to boil the eggs then I use them for different reasons. 
and I will link that down in the description box, but perfect eggs. Now I'm just going to chop these up and add them. Look at that. Perfect. I'm just going to give them a chop and then add them right into my mixture. It's okay if the yolk falls out. They're all going to the same place in my mouth. We are almost there. I've got everything in my little bowl here, but the most important delicious is I've got my rice. I'm using instant rice in here, and that's why I'm putting it in uncooked. If you're using anything other than instant rice, minute rice, anything like that, cook it prior to putting it in here. But since this is instant rice, the liquid in here, along with the oven, will cook the rice through so you don't have to do any extra cooking. So I'm going to start with a little bit here. I'm gonna mix it around and kind of see where the liquid level is. You want this to be wet enough so it'll cook the rice, but you don't want it to be just like soup. So I'm gonna add some rice, mix it around. And if you add too much, then that's okay. Just add a little more liquid in the form of some more cream of mushroom soup. I wouldn't add more mayo to here because you don't want it to just kind of taste like mayonnaise. Unless you like that kind of thing, go for it. But if you need extra liquid, open up another can of cream of mushroom soup. But this looks actually pretty good to me all mixed together looking good now I'm just gonna let this sit for a second while the oven preheats I'm gonna preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and then we'll put it all together pop it in and it'll be good to go I got a baking dish here and I'm just going to give it a quick spray with some non-stick get this mixture in here give it a little flatten now for the topping. You gotta have a crunchy topping on a casserole. Everyone knows the rules. And that's why I'm gonna put some stuffing mix on the top here. It's so delicious. And it's kind of a different take on a crunchy topping. Like you'd use breadcrumbs or maybe some panko or Ritz crackers. Stuffing is delicious and it has all of the flavors in it already. So you don't need to add any extra. My grandmother always cooks the stuffing first and then tops it, but I really like the way it stays crunchy, so I use it raw, but if you want to cook it, go for it. Then to top it off, I just dot it with some butter. Makes it all yummy and brown. You don't need a ton, just some. This can go into my preheated oven. I think for 20 to 30 minutes, you just want it to be browning on the top and you're going to want to see it bubbling around the sides here. You'll hear it. When you hear it, it's done. Here we go. It's been in the oven probably 25-ish minutes. It's done and it's delicious looking. Oh, I can't wait to eat this. I'm going to let it set up just for a little bit. If I try to take it all out now, it's just gonna fall everywhere. So I'm just gonna let it cool, set up, and then I can dig into it. <laughs> Here I have my casserole. It's kind of a hot mess, as all casseroles usually are. The rice is perfectly cooked. All those veggies, the chicken, everything is delicious. Mm. Mmm, it's instantly just comforting to me. Mm. If you made this for anyone, they would dearly thank you. This is amazing. Mm. So make it and enjoy it.